MDK is a 1997 third-person shooter video game developed by Shiny Entertainment for Microsoft Windows. It was ported to Mac OS by Shockwave, and to the PlayStation by Neversoft. It was published on all systems by Pi in North America, with Shiny Entertainment publishing it themselves in Europe. The Windows version was released in April 1997, the Mac version in June and the PlayStation version in November. The game was released on GOG.com in September 2008, and on Steam in September 2009. The game tells the story of Kurt Hectic, a janitor who reluctantly must attempt to save Earth from an alien invasion of gigantic strip mining city sized vehicles named Minecrawlers. These minecrawlers are removing all of Earth's natural resources, and crushing any people and cities that get in their way. Aided by his boss, the possibly insane inventor and scientist Dr. Fluke Hawkins, and a robotic two-legged, four-armed dog named Bones, Kurt must infiltrate each minecrawler, and fight his way to the pilot, whom he must then kill before returning to Hawkins in Orbit Space Station, the Jim Dandy. Conceived and co-designed by Nick Bruti, MDK was Shiny's first PC game, and was notable for using software rendering, requiring a Pentium or equivalent microprocessor, rather than necessitating any GPU enhancements, despite its large 3D levels and complex polygon-based enemies. As the developers were attempting things never before seen in a PC game, they had to write their own programming language from scratch. Additionally, when in sniper mode, the player has the ability to zoom up to 100x, but the developers chose not to employ any of the standard solutions to pop-up, such as clipping or fogging. They also worked to ensure the game ran at a minimum of 30 FPS at all times on all machines. The game's original system requirements were a 60 MHz Pentium, 16 MB of RAM, 17 MB of hard drive storage, an SVGA compatible video card, and a sound blaster or equivalent sound card, modest specs even by the standards of the time. MDK received generally positive reviews, with critics praising the gameplay, the level design, the sardonic sense of humor, the game's technical accomplishments and, in particular, the use of sniper mode. The most oft-repeated criticisms were that the game was too short and the story was weak. The game was a commercial success, and Interplay approached Bruti to work on a sequel immediately. However, he was already developing Giants, Citizen Kabuto, and so Bioware was hired to develop the game. MDK2 was published for Windows and the Dreamcast in 2000, and for the PlayStation 2 as MDK2, Armageddon in 2001. In 2007, Interplay announced a third game was planned, but it was never made. Topic: Gameplay. For the most part, MDK is a run-and-gun third-person shooter. It also features several minigames and allows the player to enter first-person mode at any time they wish so as to use their sniper weapon. The basic design of the game involves distinct individual levels in which the player character, Kurt Hectic, must infiltrate a minecrawler, fight his way through an array of enemies, tackle some rudimentary puzzles, and reach the control center, where he must then eliminate the pilot in a boss fight. Every level is completely different, enemies, level design, aesthetic, and control center layout, with a different strategy required to eliminate each pilot. During the run and gun gameplay, the player must frequently use Kurt's ribbon shoot, a parachute contained within his outfit that can be used indefinitely. The shoot allows Kurt to make long jumps, survive long falls, and utilize updrafts. It deploys immediately, and retracts automatically when not being used. Kurt also has access to a smart bomb type close air support feature, where he can call Max to fly a bomber over the battle area and drop bombs on the enemies. To call Max, Kurt must have collected an airstrike pickup within the game. He must enter sniper mode to select the area he wants Max to target. Additionally, the airstrike can only be used in exterior locations on the minecrawler. Other weaponry in the game includes grenades. The world's most interesting bomb. When Kurt throws the bomb, all enemies within the vicinity will approach it, at which point Kurt can detonate it. The very large hamster hammer. A giant hammer that causes the ground to vibrate violently, damaging any nearby enemies, and the world's smallest nuclear explosion, used for opening locked doors. In addition to the run and gun, sniper modes, there are several additional gameplay modes in MDK. All levels start out with an atmospheric entry, in which Kurt jumps from his base ship, the Jim Dandy Space Station, which is in orbit around Earth, to the minecrawler on the planet's surface. 
As he descends, the minecrawler activates its radar, which, if touched, triggers the launch of anti-air missiles, which must be dodged. Some levels feature Kurt taking over an enemy bombing ship and performing bombing runs, some feature a glider which Kurt must ride to a specific location. One level features several snowboarding sequences, where Kurt must navigate obstacles while destroying enemies. Additionally, once a level has been completed, the minecrawler disintegrates, and is sucked back into the energy stream from which it emerged, taking Kurt with it. Kurt then has a set period of time in the energy stream, during which he pursues a health power-up, which, if collected, grants 150% health for the start of the next level. If he touches the walls of the stream, he loses health and decelerates. At the end of the set period, Max will enter the stream on a tether and pull Kurt back to the gym dandy. Kurt's main defense against his enemies is his coil suit, a skin-tight armor made of a Kevlar-like material, and created on a nuclear blast-proof sewing machine. This suit serves as a bulletproof vest during the combat sections of the game, and also protects Kurt from friction and heat during the atmospheric entry sections. Kurt's weapon is a chain gun, which is attached to his arm, and carries unlimited ammo. The other major weapon in the game is a sniper gun. This is created when Kurt detaches his chain gun from his arm and mounts it onto his helmet. The sniper weapon can zoom up to 100x, and has the capability of supporting five different types of ammunition, including homing missiles and mortar shells. Kurt does not actually see out of the helmet, rather, he sees out of a HUD, which he uses to aim. There are also three bullet cams that track each projectile and linger briefly after impact, showing any damage done. However, when Kurt is in sniper mode, he is unable to move, and can thus be easily targeted by enemies. The enemies in MDK are a collective of aliens called Streamriders, under the command of Gunter Glut. Each minecrawler is manned primarily by various types of soldiers named Grunts. Some areas contain Grunt Generators, which create an infinite number of enemies until destroyed. Apart from grunts, and each minecrawler's unique pilot, Kurt will also encounter various types of robots, tanks, automated and manned turrets, animals, small attack ships, troop transport ships, and sentry drones. Plot <inaudible> 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 The story of the game begins in 1996 when inventor, scientist Dr. Fluke Hawkins believes he has made a revolutionary discovery, an outer space phenomenon he calls, flange orbits. However, when he approaches the scientific community with his discovery, he is ridiculed. Determined to prove his colleagues wrong, Hawkins builds a space station, the Jim Dandy, and bribes aboard his laboratory janitor, Kurt Hectic, by means of Hungarian goulash. He then launches the station into orbit, projecting that the mission will last five days. However, after a week, Hawkins realizes flange orbits do not actually exist, but rather than return to Earth in shame, he decides to remain on the dandy to try to discover something, anticipating another week in space. Kurt is extremely unhappy with this development, but once Hawkins shows him how to program the VCR, he calms down. A year later, having made no discoveries, Hawkins begins work building a genetically engineered robotic dog, which he plans to call Bones. After a year, Bones is fully operational, although both Bones and Kurt prefer the name Max. Despite having four arms and two legs, and being full of energy, Max proves more than a little reluctant to help Hawkins with the chores on the dandy, proving more interested in tending to his vegetable garden. Another year passes without Hawkins making a breakthrough until he notices streams of energy moving through the solar system towards Earth. He sends a warning down to Earth, along with some of Max's oranges, but is ignored. Upon reaching Earth, the streams disgorge gigantic minecrawlers. City-sized vehicles designed to strip mine the natural resources from a planet, crushing anything in their path. The aliens, known as Streamriders, and under the command of Gunter Glut, easily demolish Earth's military forces, and so Hawkins decides to take action to save the planet. Hawkins reasons the only way to fight the aliens is with his newly invented coil suit. But due to his advancing years and Max's extra pair of legs, Kurt is the only one who can wear it, and, thus, becomes the very reluctant hero. As such, Kurt is dispatched on mission, deliver kindness, entering the minecrawlers from above, and destroying them from the inside out, shooting his way through to the pilot, whom he then kills, before being extracted back to the gym dandy. Kurt fights his way through a number of minecrawlers, destroying them one by one, until he reaches the crawler piloted by Gunter Glut himself. 
Kurt destroys the final minecrawler, but Glut captures Max, and escapes into an energy stream leading to his base ship. Kurt gives chase and frees Max, who tricks Glut into eating him. Max then kills Glut by exploding him from within. The two then escape and destroy Glut's ship. The ending sequence is a monochrome mix of a French music video, Non Non Rien Na Change, by Billy Z. Kick, and clips from the MDK promotional video. Topic Development. Topic Origins. MDK's writer, co-designer and co-artist Nick Bruti has said the initial impetus for the game was his desire to move away from the type of game on which he had previously been working, family-friendly games such as Aladdin The Jungle Book Earthworm Jim and Earthworm Jim 2 all of which Bruti had worked on for the Sega Genesis. According to Bruti, MDK was a reaction, or outburst, from having worked back-to-back -back on cartoon games such as Aladdin, Jungle Book and Earthworm Jim. Don't get me wrong, I loved working on those games and learning new styles, but my heart is in fantasy and science fiction. I knew straight away that this was what I wanted to do next. Broody's first image for the game was a doodle of an armor suit with a self-contained machine gun, and a helmet that could be used as a sniper rifle. Once he had this concept in place, he wrote a rough draft of the story, and brought together a small team of people with whom he had worked before, programmer Andy Astor, designer Tim Williams, artist and designer Bob Stevenson, animator Sean Nelson and, later, programmer Martin Brownlow. One of the first decisions the team made was not to develop the game for the system with which they had the most experience, the Sega Genesis, but instead to develop it for the PC, making it Shiny's first PC game. Developing for the PC brought a number of advantages, not the least of which was it allowed the team to make the game using 3D computer graphics. As Bruti explains, I wanted to work on PC because the game was 3D, which wasn't an option on consoles at that point. Tim Williams explains another advantage of working on PC was, it meant I wouldn't have to tone the game down to deal with the Sega and Nintendo's ratings boards. I loved the concept. I could see immediately the game would have a unique look and plenty of design opportunities. We were all big fans of the Alien movies and H.R. Giger, so that probably had some influence. As Shiny intended the game to be gory, even going so far as to study tapes of people dying in gruesome manners to see the effects of violent deaths on the human body, this lack of censorship was ideal. Once the decision was made to develop for the PC, the team quickly decided they wanted to make a game that would push the boundaries of PC gaming beyond anything seen up to that point. The naming of Kurt Hectic was inspired by two disparate sources. In the early stages of development, some of the team saw the 1993 Mike Lee film, Naked, in which David Thewlis' character says to a junkie, What is it like in your head? Hectic? Bruti and Williams loved the line, and decided Hectic should be the character's surname. When trying to think of his first name, they wanted to name him after someone who lived a notoriously hectic life, and settled on Kurt Cobain. Topic. Gameplay development At the time, the shooter game market was dominated by first-person shooters, most of which worked off the template set by Doom and Quake. However, the developers were never interested in making a first-person shooter. Bruti was particularly passionate about this aspect of the game, arguing, I feel the player is more involved in the world when they can see their own character. Williams agrees. We wanted the player to see all the cool actions the main character would be performing, so third person was the natural choice and challenge we went for. From the earliest stages of level design, it was decided each level would begin with a free fall minigame, before the level proper begins. Initially, the plan was for Kurt to travel through each level on a futuristic motorcycle, which would morph around him to protect him and would be integrated into his coil suit. However, this idea was ultimately scrapped in favor of a more straightforward 3D run-and-gun style gameplay. Another early concept which was scrapped was that sniper mode would only be available to the player during the boss fight at the end of each level. This was changed so the player could use sniper mode whenever they wished. 
An early concept which did make it into the final game was the notion of ridiculous weaponry. One of the first such weapons conceived was the world's smallest nuclear bomb, as the team wanted to come up with the most over-the-top way imaginable to open a door. Topic. Design Every level in the game was designed primarily by a different level designer, which is why every level looks and feels so different from all the rest. To ensure Kurt and the enemies in the game moved as realistically as possible, their movements were created using motion capture, a relatively new technology in video game development at the time. Unlike previous motion capture games, however, the motion scripts for individual limbs were split up, allowing the developers to mix and match them and thus build a greater variety of animations. In terms of designing the character of Kurt, the most important aspect was ensuring a smooth transition from the third-person mode to the sniper mode. This was when the developers decided to make Kurt's sniper rifle the same gun as his machine gun, rather than having to stop and extract a new weapon when switching modes, Kurt simply attaches the gun to his helmet. This also made sense within the milieu of the game as it made Kurt's coil suit a completely self-contained one-gun offensive, defensive ensemble. In designing the suit, Bruti stated, At the time most of the other action games out there were very clunky and hardcore looking. I wanted something with more flair and elegance. I remember looking at a lot of old Spanish armor for the decoration and flourish. When designing the enemies, each enemy type was sketched on paper, before being built as a 3D wireframe model, which would then be placed into the gaming environment. Once the model was in the game it was generated using texture-mapped polygons and then animated using the information gathered from the motion capture system." For the larger enemies, the polygon structure was so detailed as to allow players to shoot individual body parts, such as legs, arms, and in some cases, even shoot out the eyes of particular enemies. Technology. Because the game was attempting things never before seen in a PC game, the team decided to write their own programming language from scratch. However, rather than simply having the programmers write the language, the designers and artists also worked on it, allowing a more collaboratively creative atmosphere than as usual, and facilitating the language to work specifically to accommodate the elements of the game which the designers and artists wished to achieve. Because sniper mode was a major part of the game, with the ability to zoom up to 100x, the team decided not to employ any of the usual techniques to limit pop-up, such as clipping and fogging. A major technical issue was that of frame rate. Shiny felt most PC games maintained frame rate by using big pixels in low resolution, which works as long as the game is not running SVGA mode. Based on their experiences developing for consoles, they wanted to take a different approach, using small pixels in high resolution. They set a target of maintaining a constant frame rate of at least 30 FPS at all times on all machines, and so they simply play-tested the game multiple times. Any moment when the frame rate dropped below 30, they either removed something from that particular part of the game, rewrote the graphics code, or altered the artwork until they could get the frame rate back up to where they wanted without having to reduce the resolution or increase the pixel size. According to Bruti, we had no idea how fast we could get the engine when we started. The game would run too slow if we textured everything, so some parts were just flat shaded for speed. We did our best to make that look like a design choice, or shadows, but it was a tricky balance." When the game debuted at the 1996 E3 event in April, producer David Perry emphasized that he felt Shiny's lack of experience on the PC was to their advantage. Instead of simply rewriting a game that's already been written and having to meet a set of expectations, we can shoot really high. He also argued the huge levels and more colorful environments than usually seen in PC shooters meant the game should stand out from the competition. This is tons more work than most people are used to seeing a PC do. MDK was designed at a time when 3D gaming was becoming popular, but GPUs hadn't had much of an impact on game development, and as such, graphics would be designed to operate in software. Ultimately, the initial release of the game relied wholly on software rendering, without any additional GPU requirements. 
The game's original system requirements were a 60 MHz Pentium although 90 MHz was recommended, 16 MB of RAM, 17 MB of hard drive storage for basic installation, 37 MB for full installation, an SVGA-compatible video card, and a sound blaster or equivalent sound card, very basic specs even for the time. However, patches were later released that added support for then-popular 3D APIs. Topic. PlayStation Port In December 1996, it was revealed the game was being ported to the PlayStation by Neversoft. The Neversoft team had an initial deadline of six months. According to developer Mick West, the sheer size of the PC version presented problems for the port, but in some respects, the PlayStation version would improve on the PC version. The PC version keeps a lot of data resident whilst you go between areas. We're going to spool a lot more between the areas. And we're also compressing the data, which leads to a little bit of degradation on things like animations but it's hardly noticeable at all. It looks almost identical, in terms of the amount of animations and the amount of graphics in the game. But we have a lot more colors on screen. On the PC, they're limited to using one 256 color palette. We're not limited at all, we can use as many palettes as we like. Each texture in the game has its own palette, which means effectively we've got 32,000 colors on screen at once, which gives a lot more vibrancy to the look of the game. We're also using proper transparency. We're going to be doing some lighting effects that they don't have the power to do on the PC. Because the PC version was still months away from completion when work on the PlayStation port began, the Neversoft team had to continually adjust their work in response to updates they received from Shiny. Topic. Meaning of MDK While the precise meaning of the title's three-letter acronym is never revealed during the game, the gaming press and fans adopted Murder, Death, Kill, which was coined as a neologism in the 1993 film Demolition Man. Another possibility is documented in the game manual, where Kurt's mission is named, Mission, Deliver Kindness. It could also stand for the first initials of the game's characters, Max, Dr. Hawkins, and Kurt. In the readme for the PC version of the game, it is stated, It stands for whatever we say it stands for on any given day, i.e., today it stands for Mother's Day Kisses. In the European PC release, the background images during installation present many possible meanings for the letters, one of which is, Murder, Death, Kill. In the Japanese release, on the back cover it says in bold yellow letters, My Dear Knight. During the installation of MDK2, various meanings are shown, again including, Murder, Death, Kill. The original meaning of, MDK, from the company's initial promo video was in fact, Murder, Death, Kill. In a 2009 interview with NowGamer, David Perry revealed that because the North American publisher Pi was supposed to make toys based on the game, they did not like the title, so the words were removed and simply replaced with MDK. Reception It received generally positive reviews on both PC and PlayStation. The Windows version holds an aggregate score of 89% on GameRankings, based on five reviews. The PlayStation version holds a score of 76%, based on six reviews. Game Revolution's Johnny Lee scored the PC version an A, calling the game, non stop 3D shooting, killing, exploding, dodging, parachuting, running, ambushing, assassinating, jumping, mind blowing action. He wrote, did you think that the 3D gaming style in Mario 64 was awesome, but the game just too soft for you? Try it again with a twist of doom and you can say, Up yours. To those soft core, nonviolent, weak ass kitty games. He praised the gameplay, sniping mode, the bombing minigame, and the game's acerbic sense of humor. He concluded, MDK combines sweet graphics and revolutionary gameplay and design concepts to put it in a class by itself. Thank heavens someone decided to create something revolutionary rather than dupe others' successful ideas. GameSpot's Jeff Sengstack scored the PC version 7.6 out of 10, calling it 
a visually exciting, mentally challenging shooter with a humorous and twisted viewpoint. He praised the gameplay. The game mechanics deviate greatly from standard shooter fare, and MDK sports many innovative features. He was impressed with sniper mode, with the humor, and with the originality of some of the weaponry and enemies, but was critical of the controls and the length of the game. He concluded, MDK is frequently fun, sometimes frustrating, full of surprises, and visually stunning. It's not going to inspire the next revolution in action gaming, but it is an enjoyable diversion. GameSpot's Josh Smith scored the PlayStation version 7 out of 10, writing, With innovative graphics, great level design, and awesome special weapons, everything looks great on paper. A number of flaws limit the game's lifespan, though, and raise questions about what's really important in games, style, mood, and vibe or solid gameplay, consistent graphics, and a continual challenge." He was critical of the graphics, saying, "...you may wish they'd traded a little of the game's visual inventiveness for some consistent graphical clarity. There's a ton of polygon dropout." And when things get busy, with dozens of on-screen enemies, projectiles, and explosions which is in almost every scene, things slow way, way down, or animation frames disappear." He also felt the game was too short, concluding, "...MDK is something of a mixed bag. Amazing graphics style, but little graphical consistency. Awesome combat action, but little combat challenge." Great puzzles, but they're really pretty simple, and the whole game can be solved without using too many brain cells. IGN's Jay Boer scored the PlayStation version 8 out of 10, calling it, one of the most impressive PC to PlayStation ports ever seen, arguing, the game moves just as fast as the PC version, it has all the levels, including a few bonus ones, and the sniper helmet is still pixel perfect. His only real criticism was that there are random slips in framerate during some levels because of the real-time loading. Topic: <laughs> <laughs> Sales and sequel. The game was both a critical and a commercial success, and Interplay decided to begin work on a sequel immediately. According to the publisher, global sales of MDK surpassed 400,000 copies by June 1998. Its sales had reached 500,000 copies by early 2000. Interplay approached Bruti for ideas, but he didn't want to go straight into another MDK game. I hadn't liked rushing from Earthworm Jim to its sequel without a creative break, and I felt the game suffered because of that. In any case, his new development studio, Planet Moon Studios, was already working on Giants, Citizen Kabuto. Bruti asked Interplay if they would consider waiting until he was finished on Giants before beginning on MDK2, but they chose to press on with the game without him, handing development over to Bioware. <laughs> <laughs> Notes <laughs>